I'll cut across to Kamaljit Sandhu, who's joining us right now from Mandi, uh, the home uh, of uh, the chief minister, the incumbent chief minister of Himachal, who is being touted as the next chief ministerial face, Mr. Jairam Thakur. But, uh, Mr. Fabi, I'd bring you in on the role of Prem Kumar Dhumbal in all of this. He was denied a ticket because he had exceeded the age uh, which had been set apparently by, uh, you know, the BJP, which was 76 years old. But a lot of his supporters were also denied tickets. Do you think the you know, it will unsettle the math where the BJP is concerned, or do you think Mr. Nadda has been able to manage it? Uh, you see, Preeti, <clears throat> both uh, Mr. Dhumal and Mr. Shanta Kumar are from these new areas, and uh, both of them are not active in even campaigning, so not to contest the election, but they are, uh, in Mr. Dhumal is not very active even uh, in the campaign uh, of the party in that area. So these two leaders have substantial uh, supporters, and um, although they have not said anything against the party, but at the same time they are not that active as uh, they were supposed to, uh, and they were expected to be. Of course, Mr. Nada is also from that area, and Anurag is active. Uh, but the absence of these two stalwarts uh, may, may slightly impact uh, the BJP prospects there. You know, Rahul, uh, you know, before I go to Kamal and before I go to uh, Manisha Prem, I want to bring you in on this. There was a time, uh, especially when there was the BJP gauge that there was anti-incumbency, there were rumors at one point of time, you know, the political corridors were abuzz that the chief ministerial face could very well be somebody like an Anurag Thakur. Uh, what changed there? And what is interesting in all of this is that, yes, Prem Kumar Dhumbal is not saying anything. Anurag Thakur uh, extensively campaigning, but nobody can forget where he literally cried and said that my father didn't get a ticket, though he wanted to fight. You see, I think, I think there is a lot of BJP's intra-battles uh, intra which are there in Himachal. Uh, it is very clearly, it's known very well that Mr. Jairam Thakur is very close to Mr. Nadda. There is a Thakur versus Thakur element that Nadda needs uh, Jairam Thakur mm -hmm. to keep Mr. Dhumal, another Thakur of the state, at bay. And there is a very interesting story of last election, how a lot of things unfolded. And everybody says that Mr. Jairam Thakur was a surprise candidate. But I was speaking to him a long time back when he told me that during the campaign in 2017, in the Rajgarh seat, Amit Shah went and announced that Dhumal will be the chief minister. One day later, when he came to Jairam's uh, Thakur seat in 2017 only, during his speech, he said that they have to give them a big So somewhere it seems J Amit Shah knew that J Mr. Mm -hmm. Dhumal was losing and, and Mr. Jairam Thakur was already, in the, you know, almost big, ready to be picked up as the chief minister candidate. Somewhere, I think Mr. Dhumal has been asked to stay put. I don't think the BJP wants him to be a power center by campaigning. As Mr. Pabi is saying, he's not visible. I think it's not by choice. Mm -hmm. It is not by choice. A lot of people don't campaign and they want to sulk, show that they are sulking. But this is a case where I think Mr. Dhumal has compromised eventually that his son is doing well in the national politics. He's a minister in the center. Uh, and eventually, I think, I think, I think that's the His other son has also been accommodated quite yes. well. Yes. So, you see, that accommodation element, I think yes. that the, this is what I think a politician looks for. Why should he hurt? He's got a, that 76-year bar is also there. I think Mr. Dhumal uh, has retired gracefully uh, more than anything else. Retired, tired or sulking or been told to, you know, lie low. But also the fact uh, he might not uh, impact it as much, but the very loyalist of his his coterie that have also been denied tickets this time around. But uh, I will cut across right now to Kamaljit Sandhu. But before that, Manisha Priyam, I'll bring you in on this. You yourself touched upon the Thakur path and trying the BJP's, uh, one of its biggest challenge to contain it. But, uh, you know, another thing that we've been talking about is that it's everyone saying it's a close contest, it's a close contest. Do you see this as a close contest? And if it is a close contest, then ultimately, you know, what has been traditional knowledge is that if it's a close contest, the last mile connectivity matters and the BJP will take it away from the Congress. Yeah, I uh, agree with you. Uh, and I believe very much that Himachal has always been a close contest. Himachal has been a uh, you know, two-party race. The Amadmi Party's efforts to strike roots there uh, have not worked. So it remains very much a two-party contest. Now, uh, you are aware that in the first-pass-the-post system, uh, you know, minor differences 
can lead to different outcomes as far as seats taken are concerned. You have yourself shown how very narrow margins, including of 500 votes, have mm -hmm. been determining in at least four seats. Now, in a 68-member assembly, these narrow margins make a lot of difference. And I would say last mile connectivity becomes very, very important. The electoral machinery becomes very, very important. So as far as the electoral arena in terms of campaigning was concerned, I would say Himachal looked like a very, very close contest. But the fact is that election day, numbers, small margins, a smaller overall number of 68 seats, that's going to be the way in which the results will come out. And I wouldn't be surprised if the BJP outsmarted the Congress in last pile connectivity. But today people are voting and I will stay away from making partisan uh, suggestions. People should vote where their issues are and let Im Himachalis have their best government and their best chief minister according to the issues they feel are important for them. Well, true that we are anyway giving out the data through our election intelligence dashboard. I'm going to go to it in just about a while, but I'll bring in Kamaljit Sandhu, my colleague who's reporting from Monday. Kamal, what is the latest? What are you picking up? You traveled extensively, Kamal, through the state of Himachal Pradesh. Uh, you know, from a reporter's perspective, how do you read this election? You know, the contest is much closer than one really thought of. You know, big guns were there, both from BJP as well as the Congress party. But perhaps because uh, this atmosphere in Hibachal is quite cool, you know, we didn't see that sort of high-pitched election. However, there have been several issues. Some of them you've raised. Uh, but we have with us people. We'll just speak to them. Mudda kya kya hai yaha par? Kyunki one pension, one rank pension ki bhi baat kar rahe hai, old pension scheme ki baat kar rahe hai, agnivir ki baat ho rahe hai. Nokriya hai kya yuva hon ke liye? Nokriya to bohat hai yaha ji, kafi hai na? Hai, bachyo ko hai? Bachyo ko, maji abhi to nahi nahi lagi na, nokri koi bhi nahi hoi. Nokri mein nahi laga nokri mein na, abhi thoda prai bhi thori chal rahi hai. Is baar jo manifesto mein hai, chahe bhajpa ho, congress ho, koi bol raha hai, hum panch lakh denge, koi bol raha hai, aat lakh nokri denge. Par aakir kar jab chunav khatam hote hai, nokri milti hai kya? नौकरी तो मिल जाएगी मतलब सरकार देगी अभी दे हमें आप लोगों को क्या आ, आप आप ये बताइए आप एक्स फौजी हैं आप बता रहे थे अग्निवीर का एक बड़ा मुद्दा है काफी लोग नाराज भी हैं उसको लेकर आपका क्या मानना है जी अपने अपने सोच है अग्निवीर जो है सरकार ने जो अग्निवीर मुद्दा चलाया हुआ है वो अच्छा है उसमें सब लोग बच्चों को जो है चार साल में नौकरी करने का मौका मिलेगा जो और उसमें जो बहुत लोग लोगों को जो उसमें सेना में जाने का मौका मिलेगा पर ये तो कहते थे कि पहले तो यानी एक एश्योरेंस थी ना कि आप नौकरी मिल गई है तो लाइफ सेट हो गई है अब तो सिर्फ 25 परसेंट आगे जाएंगे और बाकी लोगों को तो फिर भी 25 पच्चीस परसेंट में आदमी जो जाएंगे वो बिल्कुल अच्छे स्किल्ड बेस्ट स्किल्ड लोग जाएंगे और जिसमें जो लोग जो उसमें नहीं हो जाए लेकिन महिलाओं से बात करते हैं सत्ताईस लाख महिलाएं हैं काफी लोगों ने अपील की है किसी ने 11 मैनिफेस्टो निकाले हैं महिलाओं के लिए तो कई बोल रहे हैं कि 1500 डाल देंगे किसकी बातों पे यकीन करते हैं आप नहीं देखो एक 1500 हर महिला को देना बहुत मुश्किल है जी और मैं नहीं समझती हूँ कि ये हर महिला को 1500 दे पाएंगे पर जो भी बीजेपी सरकार ने महिला के लिए पैंसठ साल पे हजार रूपए देना शुरू करे और हर महिला को साठ साल के ऊपर पेंशन देना शुरू करी है वो बिल्कुल सही है जी सही है पर आप फ्रीबीज जैसे लोग बात करते हैं कि फ्रीबीज दी जाती है और ये हमेशा जब चुनाव होता है तो फ्री भी आ जाती है तो फ्रीबीज के खिलाफ है कि फ्रीबीज आप चाहते हैं सब्सिडी बिल्कुल खिलाफ है हम जी फ्री ये बिल्कुल को पार्टी से आ रहे हैं तो आप उससे खुश हैं आपके क्या मुद्दे हैं एप्पल को लेके कितनी जीएसटी को लेके कितना इश्यू है मानते हैं कि जो बागी है यहाँ पे बीजेपी का मुश्किल कर देंगे आपको क्या लग रहा है इस बार मंडी में मंडी में तो बीजेपी का ठीक ही लगता है You know, I'll tell you because in 2017, nine out of ten seats in Mandi went to BJP. But this time, it's a much more uphill task, especially when there are so many dissidents. And BJP has massive problem. At least 21 of them. Now the phone calls have gone from even the Prime Minister to one of the candidates, and this is where it's a high stake battle. It may be a small state, but as far as the prestige is concerned, the BJP president J.P. Nadda is from here. Anurag Thakur has been camping here. So for BJP, it's also a matter of prestige, but. Meanwhile, for Congress, it's do or die. So both parties are pulling all out stops. 